Okay, imagine you have a 12-year-old child. One day he's sitting in elementary school, learning his timetables, how to spell, and the next day he's earning a purple heart in one of the most intense naval battles in history. Does that sound insane? Like something not even Hollywood could dream up? Because it's too unbelievable? It actually is too far-fetched for Hollywood, that's true. But it really did happen. His name was Calvin Graham, and at 12 years old, he was the youngest American combatant in World War II. And this is his incredible story. So I sound like a broken record, but Calvin Graham is another one of those people that we should all be familiar with, but sadly, very few of us would recognize his name. I certainly didn't know who he was prior to creating this channel. Of all the unbelievable stories, and we've done a lot of them, Calvin is simply the most amazing because he was 12 years old. Not 16 or 17, the guy was 12. I have two kids and I can't wrap my brain around the fact that he was at war at 12 years old. But let's give this a try. Stick around through the whole video, by the way, because at the end I have an ask of you. I think he should have gotten the Medal of Honor. I think he deserved it. And we're gonna talk about what we could do to help get Calvin the Medal of Honor posthumously. So, if a kid joins the Navy during wartime at 12 years old, you could probably predict that he didn't have a perfect home life. And that was certainly the case with Calvin, no doubt about it. He came from a large family, had six siblings. His parents were divorced early on, divorced early on not a surprise. And his mother remarried to an abusive stepfather. To say that they were poor is an understatement. Funnily enough, years later, when a reporter asked him why he wanted to enter the war at such a young age, he remarked that it was because he hated Hitler, who reminded him of his stepfather. Ouch. So by 10, young Calvin is basically on his own. He lives with friends and relatives. He sometimes sleeps on the streets, sometimes on their couches. He has very little contact with his mother, who he only occasionally sees. When Pearl Harbor is attacked, a bunch of his cousins and his friends enlist, many of whom were underage, by the way, which wasn't as uncommon as you'd think. So a slight digression here, but it turns out there were something like 1,200 kids of 16 and younger who actually fought during World War II, which I find totally staggering. Most of them, like Calvin, simply forged their mother or their father's signature and then somehow passed the physical. I think especially early on when the military needed men, I don't think the Army and the Navy were trying all that too hard to validate age. Granted, nobody was 12 like Calvin, he was unique, but there were a lot of 15 and 16 year olds sneaking into the war, way more than you'd imagine. And that's not counting the 17 year olds who could enter with their parents for a mission. It was just an unbelievable time when you think about teenagers fighting in this global war. In fact, that's sort of how Calvin passes the physical. To make himself appear older, he actually begins shaving at 11 years old and practices speaking with a deeper voice. He borrows his brother's fedora and sort of walks into the recruitment station looking like one of those noir movie detectives. Now you gotta keep in mind, he's only five foot two, 125 pounds. He wasn't some giant figure. So he really doesn't have much working in his advantage other than his determination. And this guy, this kid Calvin, boy, was he determined to get into the war. But the best part is part of the physical is dentistry. And the Navy dentist immediately could tell he's 12 because he sees that he still has his baby teeth. Now you can't run away or hide from your baby teeth. So here he is with the Navy dentist and the dentist calls him out on it It says, you're 12. And Calvin insists on saying, no, no, I'm 17. And they go back and forth for a while during this physical. And finally, Calvin essentially blackmails the dentist. He tells him that he's already passed a bunch of 14 or 15 year olds because they're all his friends and he knows about it. And he threatens to rat the guy out if he doesn't pass them. I mean, talk about Moxie. Keep in mind, this kid is 12. So the blackmail works and 12 year old Calvin Graham tells his mother he's gonna go visit some relatives in San Diego and instead he's shipped out to basic training. Again, he's 12. After a few months of basic, Calvin is trained as an anti-aircraft gunner and is assigned to the newly minted battleship, the USS South Dakota. Now keep in mind here, it's the spring and early summer of 1942 and things are not going well in the Pacific for the United States. Following Pearl Harbor, if you remember, Japan had a string of brutal victories of the Philippines, Singapore, Burma, Hong Kong, 
and the Allies are still very much on their heels. So the South Dakota becomes part of a task force along the legendary carrier, the USS Enterprise. And no, not the one commanded by James T. Kirk, though I believe that Enterprise was named after this Enterprise. And they race out to the Pacific in the fall of 1942. As they reach the Santa Cruz Islands, the task force is ambushed by an intense Japanese assault. And the South Dakota fiercely protects the Enterprise and it survives. All told, the South Dakota anti-aircraft guns shoot down 26 Japanese planes, which is pretty amazing. And remember, 12-year-old Calvin is one of those gunners. So this kid is thrown right into the deep end of the war, comes out firing. I mean, you, you gotta love this. So the South Dakota gets damaged. It goes back to Pearl Harbor for some repairs, and then it returns to the Solomon Islands, this time for Guadalcanal. It's now November 42, and the South Dakota is at the center of the action for the four-day naval battle at Guadalcanal, which in my mind is one of the most ferocious and consequential naval battles of World War II, perhaps in American history. Before I get into Calvin's role in this battle, I think the naval battle of Guadalcanal is often overshadowed by the land battle at Guadalcanal, but many historians consider this naval victory the key to holding the island and the Henderson Airfield. It also sort of finished off the destruction of the Japanese Navy, which had begun at Midway. In my view, it's a greatly overlooked battle which has had enormous significance. It was after this naval battle that the Japanese leadership realized defeat was inevitable. For you World War II buffs, it's definitely worth researching this battle a little bit more on your own. Maybe we'll do a separate video on it in the future. As for 12-year-old Calvin, his heroics during the battle were the stuff of legend, and I'm not overstating that. The South Dakota was an absolute beast during the battle, sinking three Japanese destroyers while taking 42 hits to itself. At one point, it even lost power. It was just sitting in the ocean like a sitting duck. And Calvin, he's in the thick of it the whole time, manning the guns. He takes shrapnel to the face, ripping open his jaw and knocking out virtually all of his teeth. He's bleeding profusely, but refuses medical attention. And instead, he starts tending to the wounded and dying all of around him. I took belts off the dead and made tourniquets for the living and gave them cigarettes and encouraged them through the night. Calvin would modestly say years later. It was a long night. It aged me, he said. I love that. It aged me. He's already 12 going on 30. How much more could it have aged him? I mean, it's just staggering what this kid did. And I call him a kid because that's what he was. He was a kid. All told, 38 men would be killed during the battle on that South Dakota and another 60 wounded. I didn't do any complaining because half the ship was dead. Calvin would say matter-of-factly in an interview years later. It was a while before they worked on my mouth. He might have been a kid, but boy, he was as tough as any man. Again, it's important to note that in just four months, the South Dakota fought in two of the most ferocious sea battles of World War II, and it would become one of the most decorated warships in U.S. Navy history. Calvin wasn't just joyriding on some cruiser. He was actually on one of those badass ships of the war. It seems pretty fitting, to be honest. So interesting side note, the Japanese were convinced the South Dakota had been sunk. That's how badly they damaged it. And so to keep up the illusion, the Navy stripped the South Dakota of all identifying marks and simply referred to it as Battleship X for the remainder of the war. The Japanese could never figure out the subterfuge or where Battleship X had actually come from, which I find amusing. So while the Japanese think the South Dakota has been buried at the bottom of the ocean, it actually makes its way back to Brooklyn for some repairs. There's plenty of celebratory newsreel and media coverage, and Calvin was awarded the Purple Heart for his injuries and the Bronze Star for his heroics, along with like a half a dozen other medals. Amazingly, however, his mother actually sees the newsreel coverage, she notices Calvin, and she angrily informs the Navy that he's just 12 years old. Essentially, his mom rats him out. So this is where the story turns from heroic to a little bit sad in my estimation. So how does the Navy respond to this piece of information, this little oopsie? They throw the now 13-year-old in the brig. Yeah, you heard me. They arrested him. He's thrown into the brig, and I'm not entirely sure why. 
and he sits there for three months before he gets a message to his sister that he's being detained by the Navy. She threatens to tell the media about the baby vet who's in jail, and it's only then that he's released from the brig with a dishonorable discharge, meaning he has no medical benefits. Keep in mind, his jaw is still messed up, among other things, and he's stripped of all his medals. Now, I gotta say, it boils my blood just saying this. Here's a 12-year-old that risked his life and performed heroically for his country in two of the most important naval battles in the Pacific Theater, and this is how he's treated. The brig, dishonorable discharge, stripped of his medals. And his time in the brig, let's just say it wasn't pleasant. I'm not gonna get into it, but if you wanna learn more, Google the details. It was not a good time for Calvin and the brig. What's so insane is that after all this, the Purple Heart, the smashed out teeth, sitting in prison for three months, the dishonorable discharge, he goes back to class, to elementary school when he's 13. He's missed about a year of school. He's lived more life than most adults. And here he is, back in the same crummy classroom a year later. I mean, can you just imagine that? Like, what's the conversation with the other kids like? Hey, how was your summer break? I spent mine in the South Pacific saving lives and trying not to die. Oh, you got a new bike? You stayed with grandma on her farm? How cute. I mean, it's just mind numbing. The guy's back in school. And it's also mind numbing how much life he packed into his 13 years. That's probably why he's pretty messed up for the rest of his life. So not surprisingly, it turns out that reintegrating after all that into civilian life was a very difficult task for this man child. He gives junior high a try, but quickly drops out. He's fallen way too far behind. And he's lived way too much life to sit in a stupid classroom. So what does he do? He gets married. Keep in mind, he's 14. He's married at 14. Talk about bad life choices. And he has a kid at 15. So he's married at 14, father at 15, divorced by 17. Lots of bad choices here. I mean, who saw that coming? He struggles to hold on to a job and life is looking bleak. So at 17, he decides he's gonna join the Marines, which probably isn't the worst decision of all time, given that soldiering seems to be the only things he, he's good at. But bad luck seems to follow Calvin everywhere. And before he could actually ship off for basic training, he falls off a ladder and breaks his back. I mean, Calvin just can't buy a break. It's a debilitating injury, one that would plague him for the rest of his life, and since he was dishonorably discharged, he has absolutely no medical benefits. So he's in constant poor health, in pain, with virtually no assistance. I mean, it really is heartbreaking. He had a pretty difficult and miserable life. Evidently, he became a hard drinker, which again, not surprising, you can see how that would happen. And he struggles to make ends meet for years. He's selling newspaper advertising and kind of bumming around. Throughout the 60s and 70s, People that know his story and know him continue to lobby the U.S. government to get him an honorable discharge. And in the late 70s, he actually does get an honorable discharge, but without medical benefits. Talk about a raw deal. Some of his medals are finally returned, but not the Purple Heart for some reason. Finally, in the late 80s, Ronald Reagan signs legislation giving him full medical benefits, and his Purple Heart is finally returned to him, but posthumously. He would die of heart failure in 1992 at the age of 62, and he got his Purple Heart back two years later. Just heartbreaking. We received tons of comments on the short video we did, where is the movie about his life? Well, believe it or not, there actually was a movie on his life called Too Young the Hero, starring none other than Rick, don't call me Ricky Schroeder, from Silver Spoons fame. I must confess, it is not terrible. It was one of those made for TV movies, not a cinematic release. It actually got 54% on Rotten Tomatoes, which isn't that bad. It's worth a watch if you can find it. Sadly, Calvin barely profited from the film. I read somewhere that he only received a couple thousand dollars, and that was it. Like everything else throughout his life, he got stuck with the short end of the stick on this one too. It's a real shame. So we did a short video on Calvin a few weeks ago, and the comments were pretty unanimous that the Navy had done him a huge wrong by taking away his medals and dishonorably discharging him, which I agree with. Now, I get that it was embarrassing for the Navy when it came out that he was only 12, and probably even more embarrassing when it was revealed that it was his mother who turned him in. But to lock him up, take away all his medals, 
and then dishonorably discharge him? I mean, that is just horrific. I get that they had to make some kind of example of him to discourage other 12-year-olds from doing this, but what they should have done is quietly discharged him honorably, let him keep his hard-earned medals, give him his medical benefits. He did nothing dishonorable except love his country and risk his life for it. This was just atrocious. I think it was clearly not our Navy's finest hour, that's for sure. I suppose it helps a little that over the years he was given his medals back, though some posthumously, but I truly think Calvin deserves the Medal of Honor posthumously. For any 12-year-old to tend to the wounded and dying while having his jaw blown off deserves the Medal of Honor in my book. I don't care if he forged his mother's signature to get in, lied about his age, blackmailed the dentist, I don't care, it doesn't matter. This kid is the embodiment of what the Medal of Honor stands for. And with 80 years of hindsight, the government should stand back, look at the horrific treatment, and rectify it by awarding him the Medal of Honor. It's the least that the military can do to honor the extraordinary sacrifice and the legacy of Calvin Graham. So we're gonna look into how to go about getting Calvin the Medal of Honor, and hopefully this channel will make a difference. God bless you, Calvin a true American hero.